What's good family? So mash the like button and subscribe. Oh no. <laughs> Listen, let me give you man some history right now before we go into today's video. So I did a video about a week ago now giving you man some exclusive information I'd received from deep inside Alexander u camp. And that information was breaking news. No doubt exclusive, like I said, because no one else had reported on it to that point and that news was contrary to popular belief popular belief had been that u6 team were preparing were going with the kind of the standard approach of big man versus small man i.e runs that's what most people was thinking most people was expecting u sucks to come out alexander u6 to come out and try and be tricky and use his smallness and whatever else to be nifty that was the standard belief now like I said last week, I leaked to you, man. One of the people of one of the people I've got a relationship within Usox camp told me that the truth is YB Usox has seen how AJ's been performing. He's seen how AJ's been training and whatnot, and his recent performances against Pulev, and they've essentially concluded that yes, they're not going to be as big as AJ, but they believe. That AJ is vulnerable and they want to test that vulnerability. They don't believe their best chance is to go in there and, uh, and basically let AJ off the hook. Their plan is to go in there and essentially try and give AJ's flashbacks. You know what? One of their principles is, is that let's see what happens when we touch AJ's chin. Is AJ going to have kind of PTSD? If we touch AJ's chin in the right way and he starts feeling, oops. It's, you know what I mean, they want to try and put AJ back in 2019, back on that June night. They want to send him back there to June 1st or whenever it was against Andy Ruiz. And they can, they're not going to be able to do that dancing around like Joseph Parker did. Because Parker, one of the lessons that U6 camp are basically taking is from the Parker fight. In as much as Parker, before the fight, talked a big game about how chinny Joshua was, but guess what? Parker and his team talked about how chinny AJ was and how many times in that 12 round fight did you see Parker really commit to testing that theory? None. So like I said, you sucks have seen how unsuccessful Parker was in that sense and they ain't trying to go out like Parker is what, from what I'm hearing. In a way, part of the strategy, of course they're much more skillful than Parker but part of the strategy for them is kind of all or bust or what they call it what's that what's that saying essentially though all or bust i'm not sure but yeah they're looking to go all in not reckless but they're looking to they don't want to end up one of them guys who didn't take any risk and ended up losing on points from what i'm hearing they want to go in there and put a few pretty early on i'm hearing Pretty early on, they want to set pace against AJ. They don't want to let AJ get into a rhythm. They don't want to let AJ be comfortable. Look at the Pulev fight. AJ was comfortable. Pulev never really committed and still got knocked out. They don't want to be that guy. They, 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 they don't want to be the guy who allows AJ to go at his pace and then get knocked out. They want to go in there, set pace early, in a way similar to what Ruiz did. Look at that. Let's be honest now. Yes, AJ may have likely been neurologically compromised from sparring before or there was some other something else going on on that night but e facts either or all that we know is is that AJ went in there against Ruiz and he, what happened there truthfully the truth is the truth thing is the first decent shot that landed from Ruiz AJ was on Queer Street right or wrong isn't it it's called a spare spade here the facts are AJ went in there and put Ruiz down and then he got caught and that was it. So like I said, their plan is, well, what's gonna what who says that if we go in there, why can't we be that guy? Is their strategy. Why not us? The same way it was Ruiz. Go in there relatively early and get something off. Let's try and send him back to that place. Because one thing they've picked up on is the fact that Obviously, AJ hasn't got a whole load of losses, so we, they haven't got a load to go off. But what they do, what they are kind of betting on, is the fact that many AJ fights show show many how many times has AJ been down, if that makes sense, and then really been able to change the script of a fight. 
people can look back at the Klitschko fight and say, well, YB, he changed the script of that fight. <sighs> Klitschko, for me, weren't really doing much. After that round, Klitschko weren't really going for it, was he? Compared to the Ruiz fight. And actually, one of Klitschko's errors that he said was, was that after I put AJ down, Vitaly told me to take my time. But I should have gone, gone for it. And what did Ruiz do, to be fair to Ruiz? When Ruiz got AJ hurt, what Ru Ruiz kept on the pressure. Yeah? Ruiz kept on the pressure, unlike Vlad. And that's my point. Like I said, though, we haven't... AJ hasn't... To be fair to him, he hasn't shown us a whole load of losses. So we don't know. We can't conclude off of one fight, i.e. the Ruiz fight, that AJ doesn't know how to battle through. But the facts are... Team Music... Looking at what's what they've got to go off, and the fact and that fact is is that if you can get eight, put AJ under pressure and clip him, and then keep him under pressure, we haven't to this day, so far we haven't seen him push through and be able to convert a bad night into a win. And that's their plan: go in there early, get a shot off, and try and keep that kind of momentum going. And when they're in there in front of AJ, it's going to be a whole different story. But, nonetheless, I'm just telling you, man, what I'm hearing from the team. They ain't going in there to try and nick and tuck and win. Nick and tuck and nick, nick some points and whatnot. They're going in there and trying to, really, kind of trying to relive some of this PTSD with an AJ. Because the facts are, look at the Pula fight, it's there. I'm sorry, and this is the thing. What I was trying to tell you, man, about the whole... Ruiz saga you have to nip it in the bud early otherwise you open yourself up it's like Pandora's box you open it all up now now you've got opponents reading into things they're reading into the Pulev into the Pulev fight into the it's, it's obvious to see not just me everyone's been saying it Peter Fury Carthrotch what's the Pulev fight what was he doing for five rounds why wasn't he because no matter, no matter what you say, oh, people will say, oh, why be? He was breaking him down. He wasn't breaking no one down. There was no work, there was no output in that Pulev fight. The chap wasn't pumping. He wasn't putting combinations together consistently over the rounds. It was it's, it's step and jab and step out, step and jab, and it was all tickly stuff. There was no consistent work going on. No one could no one could understand what was going on there. And he looked super anxious and super cautious and whatnot. Same as the second Ruiz fight. And it's been, the fact of the matter is, people, that's the facts now. The facts are, AJ doesn't, isn't fighting with the same level of confidence that he used to have. And there's no reason for that. A loss doesn't define you. you or you can't allow a loss, no matter how bad or good it was. You can't allow it to define you and change you. And that's what I've always said. From the second Ruiz performance, we, it should have been nipped in the bud. Let's nip this in the bud now. Let's knuckle down, focus on our skills, and let's bet on ourselves. We're going to bet that the best AJ is better than the best Ruiz. They didn't do that. They bet that the tallest, longest AJ can run away from Ruiz, isn't it? More than Ruiz can chase us. That's what they bet on. Team AJ bet that no one can catch a six foot six Hercules. When he's running, which is true, they couldn't. Ruiz couldn't catch a six foot six Hercules who's running, hundred percent. That's a fact. But not, but that wasn't the game. I wouldn't be so bad yet. Don't forget this, people. The principle is AJ wasn't doing this before. That's what's key here in terms of mindset. When you go in there and you've been balling people over for your whole career, and then you come up against one dude and have a loss, and now all of a sudden everything's changed. That is mindset one hundred and one. You've essentially conceded that, yep, he had my number. Yep, he was, you know what I mean? He was my boss. He was my daddy. That's what I've got to now change my, my identity. Change who I am. Change what made me, me. And when you accept that, I hate to break it to some of you AJ super fans, but even subconsciously, when you, when you accept that, no matter how small, no matter how small, um, no matter how small it is, when you can see that psychologically, it it in itself creates vulnerabilities. If that makes sense, the minute you ch the minute you decide to change your, your style, subconsciously even, look at how AJ used to perform. AJ seldomly took a back step for his whole career, and now all he does is take back steps. So as an athlete, yeah, you can 
kind of fool yourself saying, oh, well, no, it's a strategy. Oh, no, it's a game plan. But we all know what it is. You know, yeah, we can all lie to ourselves. Oh, no, it's, yeah, I'm just using a different strategy and it's a different game plan. No, it's not a different strategy or a different game plan. Your, your whole identity has changed. It's like Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson is, of course, the extreme version. He was straightforward and no back. AJ was never that extreme, but still, let's call a spade a spade. AJ before was probably 90-10. If Mike Tyson was 0, AJ was 90-10. Yeah, if Mike Tyson was 0 and 100, AJ was 90-10. Now it's like AJ's 60-40 the other way. Maybe even 70-30 the other way against, in terms of defensiveness and aggressive. If Mike Tyson was fully aggressive, AJ used to be 90-10. 90% aggressive. Now it's like he's 30% aggressive and 70% defensive, if not even more than that. And in doing that, that put that in itself breeds anxiety and it breeds unconfidence. You do, in my opinion, which was my strategy, you'd have been better off just doubling down. Double, we're going to bet on ourselves, and you can only do that to be fair with certain athletes. When you've got them once in a lifetime athletes, as I believe AJ is, you can afford to double down on yourself because you know we've got all the. We've got all the bits. We just need to technically put it together. Because once the technique's right, there's no way, given AJ's kind of ability, there's no way anyone's going to beat him. The fact they've taken AJ, who was he was never a finished article. His defense was always sloppy anyway. There was clearly things to be improved. before. For example, don't get me wrong, I would never preach. The way AJ's fighting now, yeah, that's for me like almost like a last resort. They should have gone to that. You know what? We tried. We improved our defense. We improved all of our holes. And we're still getting, you know what I'm saying? Fair, fair enough. You know what? Now's the time to change because we clear, we've been, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I was trying to explain after the first Ruiz fight. After the re first Ruiz fight, the only way AJ should have changed his whole game is if he believed Ruiz had his number. If you believe Ruiz is a superior inside fighter, a superior whatever, su superior power, superior speed, superior inside fighting ability, superior willingness, superior dog, then yeah, you've been trumped. Fair enough. Change. If you don't believe that, you've got to double down and fix the holes. And I can't believe that you can spend your whole career fighting a certain way. And when Tony's, I believe Tony, Tony Sims has left, so that's, what's, that's another key thing here. This is, this is why Romans fell apart, because Tony Sims left, which is key, pivotal. Because Tony Sims was the one, look at Conor Ben. Tony Sims was the one giving all them skills. It weren't McCrappen. McCrappen didn't give no skills to no one. He don't know no skills to give. It was Tony Sims, look at ben, Conor Ben, in terms of this, the skill improvement. That's, what, that's where that influence came from. To, Conor Ben and AJ, before 2019, used to fight in a similar, in a similar way. Now... Where I'm going with this is, is to say that before you completely, you, AJ spent his whole career balling people over. Yeah, knocking people over in a particular fashion, extremely aggressive, but he always had a beautiful one too as well. So how can you leave that legacy and in one after one loss? So what are you saying? Think of all the people AJ has knocked out. You owe it to them, yeah, and you owe it to the sport to say, I'm not going to throw who I am. What I've done out of the window because of one loss. What if all them other men f just threw, threw out who they was because you knocked them down? You know what I'm saying? That's part of the game. You get knocked down. And if anything, the lesson you should have learned from that Ruiz fight was the lesson of, you know what, this is proven. I don't know everything and my defense sucks, which it does. AJ, because of his genetic prowess and his ability prowess, he's been able to just knock through people. And in doing that, it doesn't encourage you to really learn your skills. When you look at people like Josh Taylor, who's extremely polished on the inside, guess what? Josh Taylor doesn't have the, the, the one-punch power that AJ d does. Obviously, he's not a heavyweight either, but what I'm saying is, when you have that one-punch power or extremely heavy-handed, you can get away with just running forward and, and balling people over. 
obviously naturally that kind of power and speed and, and combinations doesn't teach you really how to tuck up and defend on the inside someone like josh taylor who isn't going to get you out there in one punch needs to know how to rock and roll with the shots keep it tight catch and counter so I, I just find it baffling that you had your first loss and rather than saying you know what this proved that i'm not going to just run for everyone because when he knocked ruiz down that was that was typical i run for everyone mode the lesson should have been, okay, I've clearly learned, this is a great lesson to, to have now, I can't just run for everyone. That was the lesson Goldberg wanted you to learn. I can't run for everyone. I'm going to need to know how to tuck up, survive sometimes. I think against Ruiz, that first Ruiz fight, AJ should have been, he should have known how to go back to the ropes if need be, catch your breath, tuck up and just catch and roll. Like Ali did, for example. Now, you don't want to use that as a strategy, but you've got to have that kind of in your tool bag. Even look at Mayweather. Look at May Mayweather. Loads of, time, loads of times throughout his career, Mayweather knew how, at uh, key points, to go back to the ropes and go to kind of his safe place. Mayweather against De La Hoya. Mayweather against Maidana. Loads of times, Mayweather, he, he knows how to just tug up on the ropes and be safe. You've got to have that in your, in your arsenal. Guess what? AJ never had that. That's one of the lessons he should have learnt from the Ruiz loss. Let me learn how to just be safe and tuck up. And watch what's coming and catch. And watch what's coming and parry. Know how to survive without throwing shots back. That's the number one rule he should have learnt. He didn't. He learnt how to now just run around and, and jab and run. That's not fixing the problem though. Because the same problem comes. The minute you end up on the inside. If you haven't learnt how to fight on the inside, which he, which he hasn't, that hasn't. All he does now here yeah, is touch and... Touch and touch and escape that still hasn't you still got a gaping hole we still haven't seen aj fix the problem and that's why even against pulev who isn't aggressive whatsoever who doesn't have any inside fighting ability whatsoever aj's all nervous and taking five rounds to get done if aj had filled the holes which were like i'm talking about essentially inside fighting um inside fighting ability and sharpness Knowing how to be toe to toe and keep it safe, you can never be a hundred percent safe. But there's a way of doing things. Like I said, watch Josh Taylor versus Pro Gray. Why can't AJ have learnt them skills first? And then guess what? If you've learnt that Josh Taylor versus Pro Gray kind of skills, and then you still get clipped and you get knocked out, fine, go running. Because then you can say, well, why be? My defense was ten out of ten, and I still got, I still can't fight. I, st I st you know what I'm saying? I still got murked. Because the running, the reason Fury runs here is because he ain't got no power, he ain't got no combinations, and yeah, that's it. So he has to run because he can't fight. He ain't. He, he can't. He's not an athlete like that. So he has to run, unless he's fighting Wilder, who's even worse. If that makes sense. But that's why Fury, Fury people, good sportsmen, they go to where their attributes enabled him to. Fury, really long, really tall. And not much power. So he was always going to be be biased towards the outside. AJ is the opposite though. Well, AJ is the best of Hovis, best of both in my opinion. I've always said that. He can do the long with the best of them. I don't think anyone's got a better one-two than AJ does. That mid-range one-two. But equally, he can open up. At the moment, none of them skills are being used. AJ doesn't use... In that Pula fight, show me one time you really saw AJ consistently putting a stinging one-two together. Don't see it. And Pulev wasn't throwing no shots, which makes which is, makes what I'm saying even more evident. AJ has anxiety about being on the inside. Bottom line, that's the truth. He got hit by Ruiz in that first fight, and ever since, he's been scared to be back there. He's been scared to be toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And if you, if you disagree, in AJ's last two or three fights, yeah, there hasn't been one occasion... Where AJ has stood toe to toe with someone. Because when he was balling Pulev over, Pulev wasn't throwing back. And Pulev, it was kind of one of them ones. One of them op opportunistic ones. Since that first Ruiz loss, AJ has refused to stand toe to toe, even for a, even for a few seconds. He's been straight touch dance. One, two dance. He's never, he's never held his feet long enough to get, any, to get any decent shots off. To get any combinations off. And even in that Pulev fight, he was overloading and missing loads which is even worse way of doing things when you watch josh taylor fight for the main he ain't overloading and, and missing by miles which is even more dangerous if you're going to be offensive 
How AJ was offensive against Pulev was one of the worst ways to do it. He threw uppercuts, which hit, hit, which hit the guard. No good. He threw right hands, where he missed by miles. Just crazy. It was an anxious performance, bottom line. No matter what way you look at it, it's an anxious performance. And from what I'm hearing, you sucks is picking up on it. And the reason I'm making this video is to say that someone in the camp, even if you forget the opponent, just from a boxing point of view, why are these skills not being worked on? Every boxer, in my opinion, should, should have 10 out of 10 confidence, toe to toe. That's the first place you should, you should learn boxing. The first place. Because that's in reality the most dangerous place. We can all be fine on the outside, can't we? Let's call, let's call a spade a spade here. Who doesn't feel safe on the outside out of range? We can all do that. Yes, dancing out of range takes a level of skill, but that's not the point. Where the money's made, the business end is toe to toe. And there's a good way of doing it and a bad way of doing it. And I hate to break it to you, but the truth is, AJ never really learned how to do it properly. Properly, properly. I'm talking to a Hall of Fame level. Why? Number one. His opponents. He hasn't, for the, for the main, he hasn't been fighting Hall of Fame opponents. Because of the era. It's a weak era. That's for the first one. Which means that because AJ's a Hall of Fame level, he's just been able to cut through a whole lot of people. If he was in there with some with some of the Hollerfields and Mike Tysons and Lennox Lewis's, he, he would have found out a lot earlier. Because Ruiz ain't even a Hall of Famer, and he found out, and that's my point. But instead of taking the Ruiz loss and saying, you know what, this is shown, I need to really sharpen up my game. I, I need to really sharpen up on what on my I need to really sharpen up on my identity. Instead of doing that, he said, oh, essentially, oh. I'm not who I thought I was. Let me run away from the truth. You know what I mean? Let, let me run away from who I used to be and become something different and change my spots. It's madness. And the fact his team have allowed this or encouraged it, I think. And to be honest with you, I think it was their idea. Truth be known, I think if I think if AJ had good leaders around him who said to him, "All right, boss, we're going to double down. We're going to get our defense tight, and we're going to going to show Ruiz, show the world, and show ourselves that no no one messes." You know what I mean? That. We're going to show ourselves, the world, and Ruiz that what time it is. And that we've we've learnt from our mistakes. Because that second Ruiz fight didn't show you learnt from your mistakes. It showed that you'd learnt how to win a different way. There's a difference. We know for a fact every fight can be won in different ways. The second Ruiz fight showed AJ could win in a different way. It didn't show that you've learnt from your mistakes. Showing you'd learnt from your mistakes would have been meeting the 300 pound man in the same positions you did before, but this time, f f for example, for this time, your defence would have been tighter. You'd have been more, more cute on the inside. Because for the main, like I said, AJ's never been super cute on the inside. He's always been getting caught with silly shots, and his defence has never been 10 out of 10. And there's no reason it, it can't be 10 out of 10. But anyway, the point of this video is, is that, listen, you sucks. To be fair to him, he's teamed up now with Lomachenko's coach. And they're, from what I'm hearing, they're reading into all these things. And that's why I need to, I need to do this video. To, know, to, to hopefully someone near AJ can let him know that, please don't, because I've got no... I think that AJ can even run away and beat Usuk on points. Because I'm not convinced that Usuk, even though Usuk is, I'm hearing Usuk is going to come forward. I'm not sure he's going to, he's going to need, because of, because of how explosive AJ's legs are, it's going to be hard to catch him. In my opinion, it will take someone like Mike Tyson to catch AJ, the way he's running at the moment. Because he, he's quick, and legs are quick. I don't think Usuk in one camp, despite... Even if Usopp's mentality is that, oh, we're going to come forward and try and kind of push AJ's chin and see what happens. I don't think they're going to, I don't think Usopp's in one camp is going to be able to do that. Especially not when he gets in front of AJ, given how big AJ is. When he sees AJ in front of him, even when AJ is running, he's not going to, I don't think he's going to fancy it. It's one thing saying it, it's another thing doing it. In, in my opinion, there's no way Usopp's, who really, for the main... There's never been a massively aggressive fighter. There's no way in one camp 
he's going to suddenly come ripping forward like Mike Tyson. I think he'll end up looking like a bit like Pulev was. Pulev was trying to edge forward and just looking looking silly. That's what I think will happen for you, Sox. I don't. Maybe him and his trainer and his mentality are going to prove that they can get over that. They can get over the hump and just commit. If you start goes into this AJ fight, yeah, and just commits and comes marching forward, fair play to him. But that's what I was going to say. I'm telling you, man, that's what Usox's plan. That's what I'm hearing Usox's plan is going to be. And the reason I'm doing this video is to say that even though I believe AJ would still win on the outside, don't let, don't let your fans, because for me it's got to that point now. I don't want to watch. For your fans' sake, yeah. And this goes to AJ's team as well. I know there's some super AJ fans who are cheering it on. Yeah, YB. Yeah, it's wicked. I love seeing cruiserweights chase AJ around the ring. Your fans don't want to see that. Yeah? Your super fan girls do. But your your real fans don't want to watch it. No no real AJ fan, yeah? Given how we... Let's not forget this. We're not Fury fans. Yeah? It's, it's a shame I have to remind some of you goofies this. But do you man not remember? We used to laugh at Fury. We laugh at Fury. We don't encourage that kind of behaviour. Especially not against this calibre of opponent. I told you Ruiz ain't no good. He can't punch. And I stand by that. He can't punch. Pulev can't punch. AJ is a super athlete. But me saying that, it comes with responsibility. Yeah? You can't let the YB call you a super athlete and then have a super athlete being chased around the ring by a cruiserweight. I don't, don't want to watch that. And none of your fans, if they're honest with themselves, none of your fans, AJ, want to watch you be be hunted around the ring or be chased around the ring by you sucks. A cruiserweight. Don't want to watch it. Not even a bit. I don't want to see, to be honest with you, genuinely, there's no reason for you to take one back step. Because in my mind, if you sucks, yeah, comes forward. You meet him head on. I just can't. I swear to God, dear. I can't see one situation that AJ, a 240, 50 pound man, would need to go take one back step against Usox. What's he, what? What's Usox going to do? Okay, Usox throws a jab and... What does, what for the main, yeah? What does Alvarez do when someone throws a jab at him? He's got his high guard up and you see him parry it. That's what you got to do. Simple as that. You don't see Alvarez dancing backwards and nipping in, nipping out. What for? He is, he is the hammer. He's what he, he, he's the thing that people dance from. Yeah? He don't do the dancing. You dance from me. You sucks should be dancing from you. He should be the one worried about what's going back. Not you. Look at Tank Davis for the main. For the main. Tank Davis ain't dancing around the place. He coming forward. And these, for me, Tank Davis, AJ and Alvarez, ability-wise, they're all in the same group. They've got that, that thump ability. Tank Davis and Alvarez seem to get that. They seem to have teams who embrace that. AJ and his team are the opposite. They've got that, that special athlete like Alvarez, like Tank Davis. But they, they don't seem to want to use it, or they don't seem to understand that. It's like... Imagine Alvarez now dancing around the place. That's how crazy this is. But for some reason, people they seem to people seem to rant and rave about it. I just I can't understand it. And now you've got you socks. Like even today's video, which which started this post off, you got you socks coming putting posts out about I'm coming for you, and and looking gully on the on the thing. I'm coming for you, looking gully. Wow, this is mad. I'm coming for you. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine a cruiserweight? Talking, I know people. I'm sure there'll be AJ fans who say, "Oh, YB, it's just talk." I'm telling you, from what I'm hearing, it ain't just talk. From what I'm hearing, they're watching AJ tape and they're rock hard over it. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing Team U sucks are watching AJ tape or the recent tape and they're getting gassed. Because there's one thing we do know: before AJ first lost year, or in fact, tell I. It wasn't even AJ's loss, loss yeah, which got opponents rock hard. It was AJ's reaction to the loss. No one would have cared about the loss. In fact, if AJ had to come back how he should have done and fix the actual mistakes, rather than changing his identity, people would have been shook. Do you know how scary it would have been to come up against an AJ who, who, who'd, who'd fixed all of his holes and had that... And had that Shane McGuigan, Josh Taylor kind of approach on the inside. 
there wouldn't have been no post about I'm coming for you. It would have been, uh, you know, I'm, I'm out. It would have been, the, it, for example, it would have been the Joseph Parker approach. You know, I'm just coming to take my money and run approach. That's what it would have been. But I'm telling you, you sucks. Like you see in this post, it's, ma it's bad. It's bad. Right now, it's bad. To be an AJ fan right now is bad. Because even if you disagree with me, you can't tell me that you feel the same way as you, as you used to do. In as much as you can't tell me that, that you you know he's going to go in there and just get to work. You can't say that. In there with Pulev, 40 year old man and it's taking all day. And the man, Pulev weren't even working. But we'll see anyway. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that, I don't know. Well, we'll see anyway. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the point here, really. Before you... An AJ fight, I knew what was going to happen. Now, it's not the same. And people tell me, but why be? The competition's changed. And what are you talking about? The competition hasn't changed at all. These U Stocks is no better than Joseph Parker or, Cl or Vlad. They're all the same. You can't tell me that the competition's changed. The competition's got worse, if anything, in my opinion. Pulev's worse. Pulev's one of the worst opponents AJ's fought. Truthfully, given his age and whatnot, Usox is tiny. So don't tell me that the oh, YB the opponents have got so much better than they haven't. No, none of the opponents are better than Vlad and, and, and Parker. When you when you look at how Parker beat up Huey Fury, you can appreciate how sharp Joseph Parker really was until he ran into AJ. Yeah, that's what AJ was doing to people. He was turning them out. Joseph Parker got turned out by AJ. Parker was lighting Huey Fury up. Then Huey and Parker got in there with AJ and was never the same again. Same as Dillian White. Dillian White got in there with AJ. His chin has never been the same again. Dillian White had a kickboxer chin. Rock hard. AJ got in there and that was the end of that. Can't take a shot for love nor money anymore. But where's the AJ gone? I don't know where it's gone. I don't know whether, to be honest, I don't know whether AJ himself has maybe said, you know what, let's just make money, guys. I'm not too bothered about the performance. Let's just do enough to win. Let's just follow them. Let's kind of try and go down the Mayweather or the lazy, I call it a lazy Mayweather approach because to be fair to Mayweather, Mayweather had, Mayweather could mix up when he needed to. In my opinion, AJ can't. Or he hasn't, he hasn't demonstrated the skills yet. So it's the lazy, it's the lazy Mayweather approach. I'm just going to use my pure athleticism to dance around and nick, nick rounds and whatnot. That's what I believe is happening. Possibly. Because I'm not seeing that. Where's that fighter that says, you know what? I got beat by Ruiz, but I'm not going to... I don't want the history books to go down and say that this man essentially turned me out. Because the same way I just... Met, I just the same way I just told you, man, yeah, that AJ turned Joseph Parker out. The same can be said about Ruiz and AJ. Essentially, Ruiz turned AJ out because AJ was a certain type of way, got beat by Ruiz and never never been the same again. Got turned out. That's not right. People around AJ should be highlighting that fact. Who are we? W what are we doing here? Don't get me wrong. Maybe I don't know. Maybe his team. Maybe him and his team have agreed. You know what? Let's just make money in as low risk way as possible. Fair play to you. That may be that probably probably the case to be fair. Let's just cash out and keep let's see how long we can keep winning fights and taking no risk and doing as bare minimum as possible. Maybe that's the case. All I know is no honest AJ fan wants to watch you sucks take the center of the ring and chase AJ down. Don't please don't please don't let your fans have to watch that, please. That's all I ask, please. 